IMF and Pakistan resumed talks on Monday with Islamabad hoping that the latest round of virtual talks will bring in much needed easing to the country's stretched economy. On Monday, Pakistan's finance secretary said that he cannot disclose the duration of the talks, but added that they do intend to wrap up discussions at the earliest. This comes after an IMF delegation visited Islamabad from the 31st of January to the 9th of February, but a deal could not be clinched. The IMF earlier said that both sides have agreed to stay engaged, adding that virtual discussions will continue to finalize its implementation. These talks are focused on the ninth review of an IMF extended fund facility arrangement with Pakistan that concluded in 2019. The IMF, meanwhile, acknowledged that they have made considerable progress on policy measures to address an external imbalance. The funds highlighted the key priorities discussed in Islamabad. This includes increasing revenue, reducing untargeted subsidies, and scaling up social protection programs. Quoting diplomatic observers, Pakistan media reports that the IMF wants Pakistan to start implementing the suggested measures, further pointing out that their statement issued after the talks in Islamabad suggested the same. The IMF statement released earlier said the timely and decisive implementation of these policies, along with resolute financial support from official partners, are critical for Pakistan to successfully regain microeconomic stability and advance its sustainable development. The official partners named here include players like the IMF, as well as bilateral partners like China and Saudi Arabia. Reports in Pakistan say both countries are reluctant to extend financial support to Pakistan without an IMF package. Diplomatic sources, meanwhile, say, and I quote, the IMF is adamant, no deal without the implementation. Meanwhile, the former Federal Board of Revenue Chairman said that Pakistan has no choice other than the IMF and the stakeholders need to be on board. Well, for more on this, Yusuf Nazar, political and economic analyst and former head of Citigroup, Emerging Markets Investments, join us live from London. Thank you so much for joining us on WEON. So the IMF and Pakistan, these talks have been going on in what seems to be forever, do you think that there will be some kind of breakthrough for Pakistan? Uh, thank you for having me. I think there will be a breakthrough, but it's going to be difficult. Pakistan is really caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. IMF wants Pakistan's bilateral partners to assure that they will you know, come up with the required aid and uh, bilateral partners are waiting for the IMF to sign the agreement. Uh, so Pakistan really is in a tight spot and not just that. Even if the IMF uh, you know, bailout comes through and some of the partners agree to, you know, to cough up some money, even then it will not be sufficient to really end, uh, end Pakistan's troubles. It may be enough for a couple of months or a few months maybe. So it is a very difficult situation. The virtual talks, as you said, are going on. And Pakistan uh, has you know, already taken some of the prior action that I may have wanted it to take. For example, hiking the gas tariff. And they have gone up by as high as 111% this week. And the government is uh, preparing for a mini budget uh, that will see uh, that will seek to increase the revenues by you know, 170 billion rupees. Uh, but uh, right now, it is very hard to say when exactly the agreement will be concluded. Although the government sources are optimistic that it may happen by the end of this week. And you mentioned the gas prices. It nearly doubled the gas prices to meet IMF bailout terms. But the concern right now is that the hardship could really press consumers um, and, and really trickle down to a society that's already struggling. Yes. Uh, you see, the overall inflation rate is 27%, but the, that doesn't tell you the whole story. The food inflation, which is most critical to over 70, maybe nearly 80% of Pakistanis, is 
around 40%, and that is the official rate. So it is really a killer and crushing uh, inflation uh, that the people of Pakistan are facing. And I have to say that the IMF ha is wrong to focus on just, uh, you know, a fiscal deficit number or percentage. IMF has not paid attention to the fact that the burden, the great percentage of the burden of these indirect taxes actually is passed on to the people of Pakistan. And more precisely to the 80% of the people who are either middle class or poor. And uh, so right now, even now, I would say, as I think I wrote uh, in the Financial Times uh, in May last year, that the IMF seems to be bailing out the wealthy in Pakistan, its ruling elites, and it is not paying attention to structural reforms that would transfer the burden of taxes from the poor or from the working classes to, to the wealthy. Uh, only, only recently, you know, some measures have been taken, but I think it is rather too uh, little and too late. For example, uh, increasing the prices of gas to some fertilizer company. A lot of people have argued for years that the, uh, if the subsidies are to be withdrawn, they should be withdrawn for everybody, not just for the people, but Pakistan's corporate sector um, and also the uh, companies which are run by the military establishment, uh, you know, receive very preferential treatment in terms of tax exemptions and input prices. That has to change. And I still don't see any sign that Pakistan or the IMF are, you know, going in that direction. That's right. And it's been happening with one government and uh, through another. Mr. Youssef Nazar, thank you so much for joining us on We On and thank shedding you. some light on this very complicated issue.